In the next series of videos, we're going to talk about measurement and we're going to talk about certainty and how we communicate to other people how uncertain we are in the measurements we've taken. Uh, but let's start with measurements um, first, uh, and we'll, we'll begin with units of measurement. Uh, so for different variables that you can measure, like length, mass, time, temperature, they all have a standard unit associated with them. So um, for length, that's going to be a meter in uh, standard units. For mass, it will be kilogram as our standard unit for measurement. Time will be seconds. Temperature will be Kelvin, uh, the amount of something. So like if you were going to count the numbers of atoms or donuts or lemons, it would be a mole. Um, electrical current is in amps and luminosity, which we will actually not use at all during this class is candela. And I've got our abbreviations for these on the right hand side of this screen um, right here. Another unit of measurement that we're going to use a lot that is not um, as straightforward as just one measurement of length is a physical property called density. Uh, density relates the mass of an object to its volume. So something with a very large density would have a large amount of mass in a small volume. And something with a very low density would have a small amount of mass in a larger volume. And we can think about density relative to water, and I think that might make it the most intuitive. Um, if something's density is smaller than water's density, which is about one gram for every milliliter of water, then it'll float. And if its density is larger than water's, it will sink. And so um, that to me is the best way to kind of think about density. And when we measure things directly related uh, to water, we actually usually report it in specific gravity, which is, this is how much different the density is compared to the density of water. Uh, so this is a, a unit that is instead of um, meters or kilograms only, it's going to be grams per milliliter. And so this is our standard unit for density. And it could re be reported in kilograms per uh, cubic liters. It could be grams over centimeters cubed. There, there's a number of ways you'll see it. Um, but our standard measurement is going to be grams per milliliter. And this is really different from our other units because these are all just one variable being measured rather than mass and volume. And so they have a, um, a unit of measurement that is usually just an abbreviation of one thing. Whereas with density, we have something that is abbreviating two things and their relationship to one another. And so it communicates both of these. Uh, another one that might be more familiar is uh, miles per hour, which we usually abbreviate MPH. But what miles per hour really means is miles um, per or divided by every hour of time traveled. And so we could write them more accurately like this. And so grams per milliliter is pretty similar in that regard. So in uh, the metric system, we will utilize a base unit and then prefixes to modify the size of the unit. Um, and so here are the prefixes that we're going to use. The ones that I think are the used the most that are really worth memorizing are kilo, centi, milli, micro, nano. We'll use pico as well, and pico uh, with a lowercase p um, is going to correspond to 10 to the negative 12th in scientific notation. So it's another three decimal places compared to nano. So it would be 0. Point, so I'm putting down four sets of zeros. So that would be like a picometer. And so these prefixes will go before our base unit. And these are the symbols for those prefixes. So if my base unit was, let's say, uh, meters. So here's my base unit of meters. If I wanted to talk about a measurement of unit that is smaller than a meter, I might talk about a centimeter. And so that would be centi for my prefix and then meter for my base unit. And we would abbreviate that CM by combining the base unit and the prefix abbreviation together. And while a meter would, um, like a meter 
it's like three feet. Probably can't communicate this on a video. A centimeter then would be um, a hundredth of a meter. And so I would be measuring a much smaller unit. And so these are prefixes to be familiar with. We will use these in conversions. Uh, what many people are used to when they come into this class are English units um, rather than the metric system. Um, and English units are kind of all over the map. Um, so for length, we have things like feet and inches. We also have miles. Uh, mass, you might see pounds or ounces used or tons. Volume is in cups or pints or fluid ounces or quarts. It's kind of all over the place. Um, and so we're, we might do some practice converting between English and metric units or between English and English units. But in our chemistry class, we are going to work in the metric system. And so these English to metric conversions, I'll always give you or you can look up. Um, a lot, um, so that way you don't have to memorize them. I would like you to memorize and be really familiar with metric to metric conversions instead. and Focus your energy on that. Um, so these are a great reference if you ever need to um, visualize the amount of something or the scope of it in a unit that maybe you're more familiar with. So rather than thinking in milliliters, you might convert to ounces so you have an idea of the size of that volume and something that you might, uh, be, uh, might be a little bit more intuitive. So temperature has three uh, units that most people are familiar with. They're Fahrenheit, uh, Celsius, and Kelvin. Um, and I know when I think about cooking or about my body temperature, I typically think in terms of Fahrenheit. Uh, but if I have to go to the hospital for any reason and they take my temperature, they typically take it, take it in Celsius. Um, Kelvin is what we're going to use in the lab. Kelvin or Celsius. These are going to be the units that we use in chemistry right here. And the reason we'll go in between these two is they actually use the same increments of change within their scales. So a, an increase in a degree Celsius is equal to an increase in a degree Kelvin. It's the same difference in temperature. Whereas a Fahrenheit change in a degree Celsius is very different than uh, a Celsius, or sorry, a Fahrenheit degree change in temperature is very different than a degree change in Celsius. Um, and so uh, to go from freezing to boiling water in both Kelvin and in Celsius, it's a 100 degree change. Whereas in Fahrenheit, it's a 180 degree change. And that's why to convert between Fahrenheit and Celsius, we have kind of a, a cumbersome equation to do that which is listed here, that any degree Fahrenheit would be equal to 1.8 times the equivalent degree in Celsius plus 32. So the scales begin at different points for zero and each degree of change is very different. Uh, so Celsius and Kelvin have the same increments of scale, but they have different definitions of zero. Uh, so zero in Celsius is defined as the point in which water freezes. And in Kelvin, zero Kelvin is defined as absolute zero, where there's no energy in the system, no kinetic energy. And we'll talk about that throughout the series um, and what happens when you approach zero and the impact of uh, Kelvin's absolute zero on things like uh, entropy as well later on. And so converting between Celsius and Kelvin become actually quite simple. Like you just, it's a difference, like that zero is defined um, in Celsius at 273 Kelvin. And so we can convert to Kelvin by just adding 273 to a degree Celsius. And if you're used to using 273.15 for this conversion factor, that works as well. Okay, in our next video, we'll talk about significant figures.